To find today's lesson, you will go to code.org. That is C O D E dot O R G. Code.org. Hey guys, welcome to Computer Lab for the 2020 school year. As you can tell, it's a little different because you're not actually in the computer lab and we're going to be starting something very exciting. Many of you last year in Global Studies learned to do a little bit of coding with the robots Dash. So this year we will be learning some more of this really neat language called code. You will be participating in code.org to learn how to code a game. I cannot wait to teach you. Okay, let's jump right in. Go to your favorite browser and type in code.org. C-O-D-E dot O-R-G. In the top corner, you will see sign in. Please click on sign in. Once you do that, there is a place to put a secret code. This says enter your six letter section code. Well, you are in luck. All third graders use the same code. X K T C D M. Now, if you forget this, it will be on your compass page. Let's see, there are so many names. Look for your first name. They are alphabetical by first name. There's me, I'm Buzz Lightyear. Now my teacher gave me a picture password. I will click the picture password and then hit sign in. I am the alien with three eyes and I click sign in. Remember, if you have the same name as someone else, you might need to look for your last initial. Once I am in here, I can see that my teacher has assigned me to course D. This is a special course just for third graders. Now, there is a button where you can click that says, get help. But sometimes asking an adult for home might be a good first step because these directions can be a little bit tricky. Okay, let's see. Hmm, the first section says sequencing. Sequencing means putting something in order. I see that the first activity is unplugged. That means it's something that we would do in the classroom if you were on campus. But since we aren't, we are going to skip this lesson. If you want to do it at home, you're welcome to. Anytime you see a diamond, it is a concept. That means it's something to read, watch, or learn from. When you are working on it, it is highlighted green. When you are done, it will be solid green. Let's go back up and look. Hmm. Oh, I also see circles. Well, the, the circles are activities. They are typically something you will have to complete, like a puzzle level. When you are working, they are highlighted green. When you finish them, they are solid green. But if you have a light green, that means that you use too many blocks. You can go back and fix this. All right, let's go into the first lesson. This lesson has many bubbles, as you can see at the top. But the first one is a diamond. It is going to be a video that explains to me what exactly programming is with blocks. So we use this blockly language to speak to the computer to get the bird to move in Angry Birds. Okay, let's get started. So on this screen, you will see that there are many different areas. This area is your play space. In your play space, your job is to get the angry bird to move to the pig. You will have a run button underneath of your play space. This is the command that speaks to the bird and says, okay, do everything I told you in the workspace. Above the workspace, there is a set of instructions. You will need to read these instructions. That is very important. Do not skip this step. If you are having difficulties reading some of the words alone, no worries. There is a play button. You can have it read for you. Now, if you are having problems understanding some words because you speak another language, there is a very cool button here to help you. If you click on the little book, it will take you to Immersive Reader. Then, click the little book again. 
I can translate into any language that I need. So I scroll down, yo hablo espanol. Spanish, there we go. I want it to document the entire document. So I will press the play button and it will read to me word by word the directions in Spanish. Once I understand, I will click the back button to get back to my puzzle. Now, this is the workspace. If you see the dark purple bar, it says workspace one out of three blocks. It will take three blocks to complete this lesson. Hmm. Blocks. That gray area is my toolbox. I will drag and drop those pieces onto my workspace to create instructions for my bird to move. Right now, it looks like I need the bird to move ahead two spaces. He will move forward, move forward. I will connect these blocks together like Legos. Make sure that they highlight yellow and they snap, making a snap noise to show that they are clicked. All right, now let's press run and see if it works. All right, good job. You have completed puzzle number two. The cool part, if you click on show code, you actually see that you wrote two lines of code. Underneath of that block code is something called JavaScript. Did you know that this is the most popular language used in coding? And even really big co um, colleges like Berkeley and Harvard are teaching their students how to use block-based coding first. How cool is that? All right, let's go to level three. Okay, it's getting a little harder. It looks like I need to get the bird to move one, two, three spaces to get to the bird this time. Let's check out the instructions. Drag an extra move forward block out of the toolbox, then attach all the blocks to when run to finish your code. Remember, if your code is not connected, it will fall apart and not work. Just like Legos, if they're not connected together and you pick them up, they will fall apart. Run your program and see if it works. One, two, three. Great job, you got it. Okay, click continue to move on. Okay, level four. This one, it is very important to read the directions first because they let you know that there is an extra block that is in the workspace that we do not need. If you look at the workspace, it says six out of five blocks were used. Well, we have an extra. Let's get rid of that move forward and put it back in the workspace and then connect our pieces back together and run our program. All right, you got it. Very good job. Okay, level five. Oh no. Trace the path and lead me to the pig. You guys, they didn't give us any help on this one. Think about how the pig or the bird will move. Sometimes it helps me if I stand up in front of my desk and pretend that I am the bird. I know that I need to move forward one space, but I don't want to go two because I will hit the dynamite. Once I am there, I need to turn. Do I need to turn left? No. Yes, I need to turn right. Okay. Then I will be facing, yep, I need to move forward. Okay, I am in front of the pig. Let's try it. Oh no, keep coding, something's not quite right. It's okay if you don't get it right the first time. Uh, many people don't get things right on the first time. Did you know that it took over a thousand tries to get the light bulb to work? Wow, that was a lot of tries. This shouldn't take you that many. Okay, let's try. If I turn, I'm gonna turn, hmm, left, yes. Let's turn left, and then I'll just be staring at the pig. Hmm, let's see. Forward, forward, turn left. Ah, that's what I thought. I still have one more move to get the bird to the pig. Do you think you know what to do? Yeah? 
All right, let's do it. Add one more block. If you look at the toolbox, it changed from one to zero. So now we have six blocks out of six blocks used. It should work. Follow the yellow highlights in your code to see it work. All right, good job, we did it. Okay, from here, you are going to work on your own. These levels will get a little bit harder as you go on. When you get to the end of level 12, there is a flag. That flag will say you have completed lesson two. Today for Computer Lab, you only need to do lesson two. But if you really enjoy this and you are having fun, feel free to go on. If you get to the end of the unit, Miss Mick will be happy to put you into a new lesson. Have fun guys, enjoy yourself. I love coding so much and I hope you enjoy it too. Have a good day, bye.